Good morning viewers, thank you very much for watching Punchline Africa Television, broadcasting all the way from the Republic of Kenya in Nairobi. Thank you very much. We are sorry for a slight delay of 25 minutes, but we are here to go. This show, the bumpy road to Kenya's elections, 2022. Exclusively, we want to look at the manifestos, the declarations, and the topic is the voodoo politics and economics of His Excellency Ruto. Yesterday, he unveiled a manifesto who was given a flag to carry the flag of a party or one of those parties in Kenya called Kenya Kwanza. But his statements bordered to insecurity. His statements bordered to security of the president. Is President Uru Kenyatta safe? Is President Uru Kenyatta able to execute his mandate in the last five years? Uh, five months left. The discussions yesterday at Kasarani were not worth it. Good morning. And that is what we want to look at. The voodoo politics. Most of you who know the English word voodoo means with almost witchcraft. It, me, I have classified it as majimaji rebellion, where you tell people that you can have a wheelbarrow to do better than a laptop. It's voodoo politics, voodoo economics. I've never seen his economy in any textbooks of economics. I have read Max Weber. Adam Smith, I don't see anything equivalent to this voodoo politics and economics. So this morning we shall chat through. And if you want to join us, feel free to join us on platform. Our Zoom number is 399-535-8320. Just log in and then join us whatever comment you want to make as long as it's not abusive we shall not tolerate to abuse we shall state facts contribute you can oppose you can say what we, that what we are talking is not very correct and we shall take it we are here to take people's views this is a community television station we want to put a disclaimer we do love the president of republic of kenya we support him fully we support president uhuru mwingai kenyatta fully we support his legacy we want a continuation of his legacy so whatever whatever the president of republic of kenya will tell us where to go we go how to jump we jump how low and how high we shall therefore today we are focusing on this gentleman, a volatile, volatile, very violent. Volatile, yes, yes. It's a good English word. Medium will correct those things. Uh, a violent guy, a guy who has got a syndrome called Stockholm Syndrome, violence. He has held the people of the Rift Valley, the Kikuyus there, on, he has held them. That if you don't vote me, I will, I will finish you. Yes, yes. Yes, that, it is now very clear because you can't see the magic, the, the magic, magic rebellion that the man has poured water on the people and said we shall fight the Germans. So, and it is very interesting. That's why we want to go deeper this morning. I'm Dr. David Matsanga, the host. And my co-host this morning is none other than Miriam Ogoto. Good morning, Miriam. Very good morning to you and good morning to our viewers. Good morning to our panelists. Good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're tuned in today. Thank you very much. We are also joined across the bridge. Across the bridge we have so, today our new friend, Gladwell Kiruga. Good morning, Gladwell. Good morning to Dr. David Matsanga. Good morning to Miriam. Good morning, Daniel, and to our panelists. Gladwell attend... Uh, uh, Gladwell, sorry, Gladwell Kiruga is a journalist, is joining us.
to punchline as our correspondent on special programs across Kenya. You will be seeing her in Mombasa, you will be seeing her in Bungoma, you will be seeing her in Kisumu, you will be seeing her everywhere where she will be going to bring us on the ground what Azimio is, Azimio is doing on the ground. We want to hyper the more. We want to make sure that Muzere Raira Odinga passes, gets it. We go home with victory. We are not going to leave this thing for a man, a madman, whom you have seen already. We have seen this madman threatening the president of Republic of Kenya. As if, if you, what about if he won? And somebody came to threaten him, he will kill him. He has a problem. So, Gladwell Kruger, thank you very much for joining us. It will be our correspondent. All the time you will see her face. How is the situation where you are? Um, coming live from the right 45, that is Q River Ward. Yeah. And the situation currently, so it's peaceful following the yesterday's incidents. But what made me wonder is why are we Kenyans being used as puppets? Why are we allowing ourselves to be used as puppets? Those yesterday who attended the Kasharan event, most were left stranded and confused. Okay. Thank you very much. And I thank you very much for joining us, uh, our correspondent, for joining us today. Continue to do that and uh, bring us the news on the ground. Again, we have Daniel Sean Wesonga. Good morning. Yes, a uh, very, very good morning, Dr. Matsanga David. Good morning to my colleague, Miriam Mokotu, my co-panelist, Gladwell Kirago, uh, Engineer Otieno, and uh, my brother, Vista, Victor Ochambi, uh, all the way from Busia. It is indeed my pleasure, Dr. Matsanga, to be on the conversation this particular morning. Thank you very much. It is indeed a pleasure to see you also on the program this morning after your long absence from the headquarters in the CBD. And thank you for bringing Victor Ochani, uh, Victor Otieno, is it? Yes? Ochami. Ochami across all the way from Busia at the border with Uganda. This is the type of good things that are going to happen. Thank you very much. Welcome to the show. Victor Ochani, can you test the microphone wherever you are? I don't know whether he wants to speak. Victor Okay. Victor. Sorry, I'll be speaking much later. Yes, we wanted, we wanted you to test the microphone. That's all. To make sure that your microphone is working and you are connected to us, to our satellite system. Thank you very much. Let's get going. Miriam, before we do that, we are all full house engineer. Thank you very much. Transmit the same to, to His Excellency, the Right Honorable Prime Minister, whatever they are, and they watch. We are going to start the game right now. Viewers, I cross back to Miriam for the today's newspapers. And Mo Mohammed Adam, I see you in London, but you have gone to a wrong man. So I I no longer, even if you send greetings, we shall not reply. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are in a wrong place. But Miriam, take us through. <laughs> Is my cousin yeah. that Mo Mohammed is very is yeah. is Ruto is he likes Ruto so much. So thank you very much. Yeah, it's part of democracy. Mo, thank you so much for joining us this morning. So I'll take us through quickly the headlines, the leading newspapers in the country, and I'll start with the Star newspaper, the main headline on the Star newspaper. Raila now catches up with Ruto New Paul Uhuru Sagana. Three public endorsement of ODM leader seems to have heard effect. The story is on page four and five, and Raila Odinga seems to be a leading uh, on this Radio Africa group a poll by 47.4%. William Bruto, 43.4%, Kalonzo Musioka, 1.9%, and Gideon Moy, 0.5%. 
don't bring cash to exam hall as examiners may be tempted. That is what uh, a CS of education, George Mago, has said. The story is on page 8. KCAA faulted over delayed recovery of Western Hotel land. The story is on page 7. And then we turn our attention to the Daily Nation and the main headline, Ruto, it is my turn. And uh, that forms uh, the uh, main pictorial on the Daily Nation. And just up there, Raila meets UK minister and impersonation missing keys mark a day two of KCSE. And then we look at the standard newspaper, the main headline, Ruto, my promises. And then it has been outlined there. Then up there, IBC plus to lock out nominations losers. In a proposal to House Committee, the elections agency wants MPs to bar aspirants defeated in party primaries from vying as independent candidates. The story is on page six, uh, page eight. I uh, apologize for that. Raila, UK officials talk of closed ties. That is on page nine. And that is what we have on the leading newspapers uh, this morning. Back to you. Thank you very much. Let's start first of all with the opinion poll. Previously, Ruto was doing this thing alone, and he was in the field alone. Now, the opinion poll has shifted medium. It is coming up, and I'm telling you, the victory is going to be on the side of Azimio. Believe me or not, we have now seen exactly what the type of man he is. We have seen the language he has used. Again, it's a sitting president. So people are not very amused. I have been talking to very many people across here. He has tried to whip emotions. You know, the, one of the most interesting things about Ruto is that he whips the Kikuyus in the mountain. But he's not whipping his people in the Rift Valley. He's not. The amount of energy he has used on the Kikuyus to mutilate them to pieces, to hate, so that they hate Uhuru Kenyatta. It's not the amount of energy he has used to, to tell the people in Eldoret. He, he has not been in Eldoret to give fundraising, churches, money. I don't think the people in Eldoret, all of them have everything, including food. But he's in the mountain. He has found Galuba people that he has actually brought on board. He is using tactics of blackmail. He's saying Uhuru borrowed money and he took the money through corruption. You saw his killer man called Kibet, Farouk Kibet on the microphone controlling everything. You know, they, these are people that you want to leave this country to. Your children, my children, where will you be? Look at that. The percentage is showing 47.4 percent for Raila. The full scale of whistle has not gone. One of the people that I have no, no sympathy with is called Mudavad. Mudavad used to be a humble person, almost I call him a bishop, but Mudavad has become more or less an, a man insulting Raila and a, and a Uru every day. He has landed the manners of people who grew up in places where they insult people. Some of us insults were punishable by not having a meal. If you have insulted an editor in the village, you don't have a meal. What do you say about that, Miriam? About the percentage, 47, 43, 19, 1.9, 0 0.5. The other people, two people have been wiped out. Yeah, according to, to this poll. Uh, that Radio Africa has been carrying. It has been carrying this poll for a while now, and for the longest time, Ruto seems to have uh, been leading in these polls. But I wonder how credible they are, because we've questioned their credibility before, but this is what uh, they, you know, they're showing, that this is how, uh, from, you know, conducting this poll, this is how much, if we were to go to our elections today, this is what Raila would get. Uh, Deputy President Kalozo Musioka and Kideon Moy, uh, you know, who the last two are not doing uh, pretty well, but it puts Raila on the front. So I, I, I don't know, is this a surprise? Or what is it that you think, perhaps, uh, Daniel, uh, that uh, Azimio team has been doing, uh, that, you know, now the, the, the percentage seems to have gone up? 
Excuse, uh, thank you so much, uh, Miriam. And uh, of course, uh, we all remember when President Uhuru Kenyatta first started talking about uh, this race about President uh, Raila Odinga and William Ruto. And I remember he, he warned those who underrated Raila Odinga, telling them that, uh, you know, this is a, mar a, marathon, a marathon, not a sprint. And uh, while you might be deluded to think that uh, this young man will be able to defeat the old man, uh, you will be really surprised that the old man will actually come slowly, but uh, will eventually carry uh, the day in this particular race. So we've been seeing Raila Odinga's popularity grow actually in twofold over uh, uh, the, uh, the recent past. And uh, this is because perhaps, Miriam, for a long time, William Ruto was used to campaigning alone, and uh, he thought that uh, perhaps he was uh, an undisputed uh, winner of the 2022 presidential election. And all that time, President Uhuru Kenyatta, even the right honorable Raila Odinga, were of the opinion uh, that uh, perhaps they should work for the people of Kenya first, they should unite the nation, they should work on the progress of the legacy of the president first before they do politics. It is until recently that uh, we had the president now announcing that our time for politics has come, and therefore he was going to be in politics in full fold. And that is what we are seeing now, because uh, we expected, uh, maybe uh, certain people expected that uh, the direct endorsement of President Uhuru Kenyatta to Raila Odinga was going to have a negative implication on his candidature. But you can see the reverse is actually true, that uh, this has been able to push uh, the popularity of uh, Raila Odinga by 12%. Uh, because previously when a poll was conducted by the same pollster, it placed Raila Odinga at 35, whereas William Ruto was at around 47. So, Miriam, that tells you that, uh, you know, things are changing. The dynamics are actually shifting. A while ago, Dr. Masanga wrote an article about the strategy uh, that uh, Raila Odinga is actually using to campaign, a similar strategy which was used by uh, the German military uh, in World War uh, One. And uh, that was the strategy where uh, different troops could go to uh, various locations and, and, and uh, do their assault at the same time. And that is what we've been seeing in Azimio Longmoja. You could find out that uh, uh, the Laikipia governor, uh, Nderitu Mreidi, uh, with a battalion of Mount Kenya leaders uh, campaigning in Anyuki. You find some few uh, leaders also campaigning in Western Kenya. Another group will be doing the same in uh, Nyanza region. Another one could be doing the same here in Nairobi and another one. Uh, in the coastal region. And at the end of the day, you realize that this team has been able actually to move a very, very uh, huge wave in terms of uh, uh, mastering the numbers and being able uh, to roll out a very, very majestic campaign to be able to advance uh, the agenda of Azmiu Lomoja uh, Brigade. So to me, Miriam, I think it's a matter of strategy. And I'll just take you back again to what I said at the beginning of my sentiment, that President Uhuru Kenyatta this is not a sprint, it is a marathon. And I really want to, uh, to promise our viewers that as sure as the sun will rise tomorrow, come August uh, this year, Raila Odinga will be beating William Samuel Ruto with more than 60% of the vote if uh, all the dynamics were to be held constant and the current uh, political landscape remains so. Okay. Remember, whatever Raila Odinga needs, uh, from Mount Kenya region, it's only 30%. This is a region where he has never gone past 3%. So even if today you see the crowd that Raila Odinga is pulling in the central region, and the fact that uh, Raila can uh, also be able to go to Nyeri and campaign without being heckled, to campaign without being uh, having stones pelted at him, it's actually a miracle, Miriam. And that is what we need for this country. Okay. That is what Azimio Laumoja uh, stands for. That is the main agenda of Azimio Laumoja, bringing all Kenyans of, from all walks of life, from different uh, religious backgrounds, from different cultural uh, backgrounds. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, uh, Daniel, we, you know, we, we have and a lot of people on the panel today, so I'd like for us to have the, the answers uh, pretty you know, short, if you don't mind. All right, right Miriam, yes. just to put the icing on, on the cake, yes. I would really like to say that uh, perhaps, Miriam, uh, whatever the opinion poll has given is uh, actually the reality on the ground. And I believe if I, another opinion, an organic opinion poll was to be conducted, then Raila Odinga would be slightly higher, maybe at around 50 or something. So that is the reality of the matter, Miriam. Dynamics are shifting. I submit.
All right. So now, uh, Gladwell uh, Kiruga, we know this poll was conducted and financed by Radio Africa Group, and it surveyed around 3,152 respondents between March 7th and 11th by computer-assisted telephone interviewing across all 47 counties. So 3,152 respondents. Is this enough uh, for us to gauge exactly how Kenyans feel and how perhaps Kenyans would vote? Should we have enough? I know our elections today. Gladwell. Uh, concerning the polls, uh, as what my colleague said, Daniel, the, the dynamics are changing for sure. And one thing I'm loving about His Excellency, the Deputy, I mean, Raila Odinga, is that what the, the comeback he has gotten, the strategy he took, it was a little bit slow at the beginning, but it has actually, it has actually bought fruits. Comparing to Ruto, who just, you know, was just against and he just formed his own team, the UDA, which currently it is shaking. And then according to the polls currently, as you can see, that so many people are changing from UDA to Azimio. So according to the polls, I'm liking it. The, 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 the dynamics are a little bit high. And according to the Azimio currently, yes, they will take the seat. Okay. Thank you very much. What 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 do people say there in uh, Githrai, where you are? What, what do you think the mood of the people when they heard uh, Ruto talking about President Uru Kenyatta? What were what, what were the sentiments on the ground? Okay, about the people talking also in Githrai. Githrai is we, okay. We normally term it like it's a city because the popularity here there are many. The people here are many. And according to what yesterday Ruto said, what the people termed it was like a betrayal to the president because the president stood with him, but currently he's betraying the president. And the people are not so happy with it. And so uh, the last time Ruto had a trip to here, the turnout was not as we expected, it was low. But when his excellency Ruto did, I mean, Raila came to get the riot and he was passing by. People, there were male, there were more people, the popularity was high, and the cheering could see that it was a true one and not a big one. So what Ruto did, he betrayed the president. That is the the word on the ground. Thank you very much. Keep holding on. We are coming to the real uh, situation. Medium. To me, I think it is time to separate the two. It is time to separate the two guys. Let Ruto go his way and let President Uru Kenyatta remain hand over power properly to whoever will win this election. But at the moment, from a security point of view, the two people cannot sit together. The government cannot work when the deputy is really the three quarters of the speech was dedicated to against the president so ruto has created what we call insecurity a very very serious security breach because he can he cannot be trusted to come near the president we don't know we want the safety of our, our president we want the safety so that if something happens in these elections to any of the candidates once they have declared like now do you know that your election, do you know that in the constitution of Kenya is cancelled? Did you know that? Mm -hmm. The presidential candidates, once they put in nomination papers, and they say we are going to be now presidential candidates, if one of them misses out of the ballot, the whole thing is cancelled. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We don't want to go that side. It is very clear that Ruto now is against Uhuru Kenyatta. There is no more blood. There is no more beating about the bush. There were people saying, telling people here that, oh, hold on, there is this. It is not there now. You know you cannot hide the truth which comes like a sunshine in Africa, in anywhere. It's only those people like in America who are looking for sunshine. For us, we have it here. 
We have it plenty. You can't hide it. If you, when you go to Mara, you get it. When you go to Northeastern, near Garissa, you get it free. Hey, you go to Somalia, Mogadishu, where, where Mo Muhammad comes from. <laughs> you, you get it free. I don't know why you don't go to Mogadishu to get it free. You know? That is, is free sunshine. A free sunshine. Uhuru has never been against Ruto. Ruto decided to defy the president. And went his own way. He started doing his own campaign. Let's look point by point. Ruto is trying to play victim. Hmm? You know that? Is he play this man, this is the guy who first of all said I would be Tanga Tanga to look after the project. And then Uru said, if you want any road which is not there, look for my deputy. He's busy. Instead of going to look at the roads, construction, infrastructure, food security, he went to import food from Uganda. You see the maize that landed, which is in the stores, even up to, up to Kisumu, medium, in Kisumu today, in the depot of Peace National Serious Board, there is maize that was imported by Ruto, which is green in color. And they have not disposed it off. This is the tragedy of this country. If you look at infrastructure, we have done, Ruto comes up and says he hates BBI. So uh, there's someone telling me here, this gentleman is saying, let's not be distracted by him. This man is going to redemption strategy. How do you do redemption strategy with a man saying, I hate BBI. I made sure that BBI. But Ruto, I want to tell you, the announcement of BBI next week, you are going to be shocked. Do you know that BBI William is going to help Ruto more than, because he doesn't know what to do with Mudavadi. He doesn't know how to, what to do with Wetangula. You know? Another thief from Syriza, who, who is now cleaning himself. That is, a, you see, where Tangula is naturally a thief who still who could be stealing, who could be stealing chicken. If you left where Tangula home, do you know that everybody, if, when people go to Syriza, when where Tangula goes for a weekend, people remove their women. You know, these are some of the things that get the campaign start medium. You cannot insult Uru and run away with it. Where Tangula of all the people floored an embassy, sold an embassy. There are so many people, including Mo Muhammad, can even finish with Tangula if you found him. He has floored him money. Eh? People are crying. Then you come and say, I'm clean. Uh, Uru, the president. What? Wetangula, shut up. The Japan embassy. That's a, that's a scandal. Did the Uru take it? Let's come together. And then I, I think let me go through the points. The man wants to play a victim. And this television is not going to allow Ruto to play victim. I am a victim. I am a victim. I am a victim. You are not a victim. You are a perpetrator. ICC is looking for you, Mr. Ruto. You have been mentioned 870 times in the court, in the ICC. Which judge is going to be stupid not to issue you a warrant? Miriam, they have mentioned, even the judges are saying, who is this? Everybody, every witness, say, yes, they said Mukuba, the man is coming to pay Mukuba, Mukuba. Who is this Mukuba? The judges would like to know. 870 times, 74, mentioned by ICC witnesses, whom he has used Farouk, Kibet, to destroy. 
Bitu ya ambiai, ukweli. Don't go. Don't insult to Uru Kenyatta and you go. Because Uru Kenyatta will not, he's, he's respecting his position. Awezi kuansa wewe. Lakini sisi, tunawa, na sisi tutaku answer Mr. Ruto. You have now come out. So, when you, you, when you come to the truth, Ruto is like Emperor Nero. Anybody who has studied Emperor Nero, from Kiruga, from Wesonga, Emperor Nero hated almost everybody, including the mother. Emperor Nero killed the mother. Emperor Nero, when he saw Christians praying, he said they are, they are praying something they don't know. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so Ruto William has become Emperor Nero is the Nero of Africa the man says where did it Uru took 7 trillion let's go back do you remember Murukomen and Akindiki carrying money from Palstato bodies I think that I, I will make a, a, a take away very seriously this one. But I'm going through some of the things that Ruto must understand. Corruption, you are number one. You were you took part, you also part of the corruption scandals deals that Kenya lost money. Don't run away from President Uru Kenyatta. In fact, your house in Sungoi was built on nails stolen from SGR. Even in Sungoi, in the Tarubo. Watu wanaita Ruto Mutu ya Msumari I've, I've done research there All the workers on the farm Muizi ya Msumari Because the Chinese You know Miriam what they used to do And the viewers Those watching The Chinese deliver these mat materials very late At 3 a.m. every morning So the people in the village Say aye why do these cars come every morning and they are not cars of this area? They are not the tipper that carry sand in this area. So here we are. Muizi ya msumari. Mutu anaibi ya msumari for SGR. Then you go and complain and tell the world that Uhuru was the one. Where did he take the money? Jaribu hiyo. Where you see the best thing that you can do. If you want to fight corruption in Kenya, you better take Ruto to committee and throw the keys in Earth River. Like the, 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 the Prime Minister of Singapore did. The Prime Minister of Singapore, to change Singapore, he even imprisoned his own brother. He locked up his brother. And he went to pay school fees for the children of his brother. And um, looked after the family. But he had Ruto steals nails at night from SGR Chinese. The house was built on Chinese money. Then you, you condemn uh, Uhuru who brought the Chinese here. This is sad. Another point about Ruto. Ruto talks about state capture. Ruto captured state in the first 2013 medium ruto used the, st the, the house state house controller the ambassador who is whose name i cannot mention here who is in the, the hague to spy on president Uhuru kenyatta he used itumbi and a group to spy on president Uhuru kenyatta is he wearing a red shirt yes uh -huh. Is he wearing a shirt with cufflinks? Yes. Well, Mutugani will. This is the guy you want to leave this good country? Then Ruto also could go. Ruto became a villager. You know, in the village where I come from, we used to have some neighbor who used to, uh, before my father was killed, who used to, to admire my father's shirts. A neighbor. When my father buys a, 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 a blue shirt, he also buys blue. So Ruto was like that. He used to be part and the parcel of this 
Grand a Sky Helicopter Boys who used to fly from one factory to another factory. Point number five, Ruto is a betrayal. As he did plant spies, all of them dotted in the state house, including some of them present Uru Kenyatta realized later after 2017, he had to change them and send them away. So if you have made the president insecure, who is going to hand over the button? And this question is medium that we should allow our people to interrogate. Who is that? Someone is joking, they're saying, I, I hand over. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know, he's here. He said, I will hand over. I can't hand over. I'm not a Kenyan. I'm only analyzing the situation. Ruto talks of economy. A bottom-up economy. Can you bring that picture of bottom-up of uh, Aisha Juma and uh, this lady dancing? Maybe people were confused until yesterday they tried to explain what bottom-up means. I saw so many television stations this morning playing the same picture of Minister Omanga and uh, Aisha Juma. I think people were very concerned. Me, I took it very seriously that they don't have a policy at all. The explanation of uh, of bottom-up policy did not come to me. It doesn't mean that when you have a curve in Uganda, you are the best. You have de delivered. You know, there are people who don't have curves and they deliver. So the economy of Ruto is a voodoo economy. The politics of Ruto is voodoo politics of Majimaji rebellion. I have never seen such things. So in a nutshell, seven, uh, so the, Ruto has taken a strategy of Fanon fans that once you use, once you label, once you use Cape God, you say the government is the one killing, but you come at night and kill. That's what they did to us in the Luelo Triangle. Maybe I'm, we lost the government. We ran like a rats falling in the water. We arrived in the Bohungu Stadium with nothing. In 1985, we lost. Hmm? We lost. So this fury, if we don't tame it, if we don't counter it, if we don't tell, if Azimio people, His Excellency, the Right Honorable Prime Minister, must put a strategy. We saw a few days ago, a few weeks ago, I wrote about a strategy. And I handed it over to the public and to hand over to, to people of His Excellency, the former Prime Minister. Use that strategy. Let's not use a pronged strategy because this guy has come. You know what the masses have taken, Miriam? From yesterday, the masses in these places have taken. This guy is fighting for us because Uhuru Kenyatta and the others and Raira Dinga have eaten. That's what they have caused. He has caused the division in this country. So to heal that division, you don't even need a redemption strategy. You need something powerful as a miracle. I submit, therefore, Ruto's politics is voodoo. Ruto's economy is a voodoo economy. I don't think it can work in Kenya, where many have capital, where many use capital, where main capital comes from few individuals. We have not reached a state where this place can think of a revolution where you are going to destroy even the market, the capital owners, kill them, lock them up. That is what is going to happen. I am telling you, Miriam, I hand you over to <laughs> send it to Wesonga or Gladwell, whoever has listened, who is ready. No, we, I think we, we, we have Kenei. Okay. Kenei, Kenei, can you come in, sir? Yes, and Victor Ochami. So we'd like to they, they said they will make comments later. later. If you are ready, you can make your comments. But that's my background. I have put the background very clear. The policies are not very, very good for this country. Kenya is a capitalistic state. Mm. 
it is not reached a, a communist social state. Nyerere tried it, he failed. Tanzania went down until they came back. So the capital always matters in any institution. You can't say bottom up. Where will you get the capital? Will you nationalize the banks? So everybody is analyzing from his point of view. Will you now nationalize the banks? Will you tell Ikute Bank, I, I need your money? It must be controlled by me to put this money from bottom down up. Actually, the deputy president was trying to explain that, uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, and he was saying that banks will be allowed to uh, to lend money to Akina Mamamboga and these small, medium uh, <clears throat> you know, businesses, but without uh, collateral, even if they're not, you know, banking with that bank and be wondered. How how does that even work? How do you lend without <laughs> without to, with, without to, with, without structure? You the, need the to structures. lend with structure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you tell me, Miriam, when you tell me you are going to lend banks money, mm -hmm. do you just come in and walk in the market? You have seen already M Pesa in Nairobi. People started getting fully sales. Do you fully sales? Do you mupango? Do you nini? There are so many applications in in Kenya here where everybody is borrowing money. And you have seen the confusion that has come. Some people have gone to see Arabi. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Victor Ochami, can you, can you hear us? Good morning. Victor Ochami? Uh, can I, Kefas, are you there? Okay. Okay, so so uh, perhaps uh, Collins Collins uh, you also Collins says can you use this strategy in Uganda instead of giving it to Raira. No, we want to get to Raira so that it looks like a Uganda, so that Collins you don't cry for food every year. Uganda doesn't cry for food every year like you Collins. Uganda has its own food. It has a problem of deficit of democracy. Cindy Miriam. Yes, uko tuko na deficit, lakini tuko na kiakula mingi. Yes, hey. Uganda is food secure and hopefully we are working our way to, to So that, that you, Raira can unite us, <laughs> but if you bring Ruto who will be stealing our maize, yeah. selling it to Kenya, then we shall not, Kenya will not develop the maize industry. Okay, so yesterday, as we go through the speech of Deputy President William Ruto, who was crowned as the presidential uh, flag bearer for the UDA party, a couple of things he said that perhaps stood out that we shall be looking out, I uh, you know, throughout uh, the show. And without mentioning Uhuru by name, he said uh, that uh, a government has plunged Kenyans into debt, impoverished farmers, cracked down on legitimate business, and weaponized state in, uh, institutions. We want to tell our competitors we will do the complete opposite. So when, because I, I, I did listen to the whole speech of Deputy President William Ruto yesterday, uh, Daniel Basonga, would you say that uh, he seems to have dedicated a good amount of his time and his speech uh, to, you know, criticize and to, of course, lay blame to President Huru Kenyatta and the government and opposition leader, Raila Odinga. Do you think he missed an opportunity where he would have explained to Kenya his agenda and what uh, he he intends to do should he be elected uh, to be the president of this country did you squander that opportunity yesterday yeah thank you so much Miriam and I, I, I found just like Dr. Masanga and a majority of the Kenyan viewers uh, we found that speech to be a bit of uh, the monoric uh, because you know it was talking about uh, the government of the day the government that he's serving in and uh, uh, like Dr. Masanga says uh, he focused more on criticizing President Uhuru Kenyatta, settling the old scores, and actually uh, sounding bitter all through the entire function. Whereas I believe he would have been able to sell his agenda uh, to the people of Kenya, whatever his manifesto entailed, and whatever he would have done better than whatever uh, maybe happened in the Jubilee's uh, administration first time and the second term. But uh, Miriam, also, you know, when you talk about uh, the Jubilee government or the Jubilee administration, you realize that this is a government which came to being because two individuals came together and shared the government half uh, 50 by 50, you know, with President Uhuru Kenyatta taking 50% of government 
and the deputy president William Ruto taking 50% of the government since 2013 for the past nine years. That has been the modus operandi of the Jubilee administration. And that is why William Ruto has some of his tribesmen, has some of his chronic clo close allies who are in the cabinet, who are head of departments in government, who are PSS, who are ambassadors, and many other senior civil servants who are from his back at Miriam as a part of government. So therefore, you know, this is not just uh, an outsider uh, running for president. This is a person who has been in government for the last nine years. And even in, when he's coming to uh, maybe vie for presidency, I believe he should use the legacy of the Jubilee administration to be able to drum up support for himself. So when he comes up with new ideas and says that uh, this is how we are supposed to do things comes maybe after August 2022, then I'm really, really bewildered because, Miriam, these are things that he ought to have done when he was in power. And worse, maybe uh, if he wasn't able to do so while in power, he would have talked to his boss, the president, and be able to incorporate these uh, wonderful ideas that he has into the manifesto and into the agenda of the Jubilee administration. So there's nothing new that uh, William Ruto is telling Kenyans that he can do that he wouldn't have done in the first term of the Jubilee administration, in the second term of the Jubilee administration. You remember when he was in the UK, there's a certain Kenyan who asked, uh, not in the UK, but in the US, sorry, there's a certain journalist, I believe that was uh, Esther Gidui. She asked him, on what basis are you running on this election? Because you have been in government for the last nine years. What are you talking about, you know, at this particular time? All these ideas you are, talk you are telling Kenyans about, why didn't you do them in your first time as the deputy president? Why didn't you go to the president and be able to discuss with him so that you are able to incorporate? You have 50% of the government. Yet you cannot be able, either through cabinet or either through parliament, to be able to be ahead and push through your agendas to be incorporated in government. Miriam, I think that is the height of mediocrity. And William Ruto is just looking for a convenient excuse and a, a convenient scapegoat to be able to blame for his own shortcomings. And I believe, Miriam, was it not for his uncontrolled ambition of starting premature early presidential campaigns President Uhuru Kenyatta would have worked with him even in this second term in delivering in his uh, legacy projects. But unfortunately, the same same projects that we are seeing the president uh, rolling out even during this time are the same same uh, projects that William Ruto stayed aloof from. These are the same projects that are allies of the deputy president who are going out there actually sabotaging and speaking ill against them. And it is a matter of fact, Miriam, that the president has delivered more in his second term more than he did in his first term. And in this second time, as much as the president has delivered, the deputy president has been a rogue absentee deputy to his boss. He has never, he has not been on the, on the platform. He has not been on the show. He has not been anywhere around where these projects have been uh, rolled out. And therefore, you know, he lost out on an opportunity of having maybe a hand in a project, in projects rather, that would have assisted him as the blueprint or maybe as the launching pad, which he would have used to campaign to become president in 2022 and be able to tell Kenyans that uh, this is what we have done with my boss during these 10 years that we entrusted us with the leadership. And therefore, I'm going to use this as a foundation to take you into the next phase of building a better Kenya, a robust economy, and being able to unite the Kenyan people. But nonetheless, Miriam, you realize that this is a man whose ambition superseded his patience and uh, his maybe magnanimity and wisdom to be able to wait and support his boss so that once the boss finishes his 10-year term, he can be able to amicably hand over power and the mantle of leadership to him. So he blew up his chance, and therefore right now whatever he's doing, he's just looking out for excuses to seem as if he's an outsider um, in government, whereas he's at the center of the government. He enjoys state protection. He enjoys um, uh, the perks that come with uh, his uh, position. And he's still earning his salary as the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. And I believe he'll do so until the last day of, uh, of President Uhuru Kenyatta's second term elapses. It is when William Ruto will be able to resign. But nonetheless, Miriam, this, I believe, was just a bag of hot air. It was hogwash, and no Kenya should buy such balderdash uh, to use it as maybe as a campaign manifesto uh, from William Ruto. I submit.
sent out a message to border border operators a few days after a crackdown on the sector was called off, saying they were also victims because they believed things needed to change. And we do have a video of that. So I'd like for us to take a listen and then we will continue with this conversation. Limited to these leaders, it goes to many business enterprises have been crippled and destroyed by a weaponized DCI, ESCC and KRA. Today, it is not just the big business. It is not just Humphrey Karaoke's business. It is not Tabitha Karanja and Keroje business. Even the border border today are victims of a weaponized fight against people who don't share in the belief of those who hold the levers of power today. And I want to promise them that power is transient and the people of Kenya will overcome. All right, so Gladwell, listening to Deputy President weigh in on the recent uh, crackdown on Buddha Buddha, and we know the events, or rather the very ugly incident that led the President to, uh, you know, call for this, uh, you know, crackdown to take place. I don't know, what are your thoughts and, uh, from, uh, you know, the sentiments of Deputy President William Ruto yesterday? Uh, on what yesterday the deputy president said concerning the crackdown of the Buddha borders. Uh, one thing is that what the president initially said was supposed to happen because uh, because the crackdown is supposed to happen, yes, but the, 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 the narrative that the Kenyans have concerning the Buddha Buddha guys, I remember one person said that we are the hustler nation. So we can do what we want because we have the narrative of a hustler has to be a border border person, has to be a mamamboga. And the border border guys, they saw it right, do what they did because they said they are hustlers. But when the president stated that there has to be a crackdown, there was so much going on, more so in Gedurai, whereby the border border guys striked, tear gas were thrown, having and what they were saying is that the deputy president said, we are the hustler nation. So that means he, like, he gave them a go ahead that you can do what you want because you're hustlers. And the rest are dynasties, something which is very wrong and supposed to, it was not supposed to have happened. Something else the deputy president said is that democracy does not go hand in hand with conflicts and division. But we see what he's preaching and what he's taking are two different things. But okay, with the case that happened like a week, two days ago, you get the right. Mostly with the Buddha Buddha guys. The president, the deputy president said democracy does not go hand with hand with conflict and division. But the way the people are saying, using the term hustler nation, it is a conflict and division of our people of Kenya. Yeah. Mr. Mint. Uh, okay. So you said the Buddha Buddha were victims. Could you, could you mute your device, please? Uh, he said Buddha Buddha are victims of weaponized fight against people who don't share in the belief of those who hold the, lev the levers of power today. What are the dangers of such a statement from a deputy president of the Republic of Kenya? <sighs> Medium. This is, I, 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 I know when I talk like this, Kenyans all call me names as a Ugandan. But I'm talking because I've been in conflict. Miriam, I've seen a small thing in our country has plunged us into chaos. This statement of you telling border border, and Miriam, early on before I forget something, you said the newspapers, he did not mention anybody. The statement is here. He said, Ruto said, Uhuru and his handshake partner, Raira Odinga sabotaged the economy by crippling the big four agenda. Mm -hmm. That one he said. So when after that is when he came about the money. After the money, sorry, he came mm -hmm. and mentioned because then who borrowed the money? It is Uru. Who, who 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 put the money in the economy? It is Uru. So he was meaning Uru. Mm -hmm. So it, it, there's nothing you can't say it was that way. It was Uru. The newspaper has been so. 
so nice and the editor just said don't mention the name but in actual sense the way things are happening in kenya ladies and gentlemen we are creating a class struggle here and that is class struggle is what has brought most of the african countries to power to fight that's why there is chaos in congo democratic republic of congo there is chaos in south sudan today because riyaka Machia, the deputy did not want to work with Salvaki. Is that country going to come back again? I don't know. God, bled, God, God help us. Even Pope Paul kissed the legs of these guys, the feet, kissing them. The country never came back. He's coming again in July to touch, maybe this time you tell them to remove the cloth and touch the bodies in front of people. Maybe peace can come. Mm -hmm. But for him to, Doc, to politicize the issue of Buddha Buddha, uh, something that has become a matter of national security, for him to think that will be the best platform to, <laughs> and, and the manner in which he went you about see, it. Ruto, Ruto, very reckless. Ruto, we left Ruto to grow legs. Let's agree. Ruto grew legs. Some states, Ruto would not grow legs. Some of us here cannot even mention a word of some people. <laughs> I don't want to say the name here. Because tomorrow you will find somebody following you on the street. You can even see uh, Muhammad is here said, Matanga, I told him, you Matanga that Ruto is dangerous. Leave him. You see that those are, that's a very direct threat. <laughs> a, a direct threat. I am just making as a fourth estate. I'm making my statements. Usually, generally, they were the ones killed. You know that. In Russia, they have killed very many. In so many places where retrogressive forces act, journalists die. Because journalists tend to do what we call fourth estate. There are three estates. Executive, parliament, judiciary, and the media. The media is the fourth estate. To educate the people. We cannot tell the people in the world that Ruto is a very clean man. We can't. We lost our son, we people from Bungoma Ruya. We lost Jacob Ozuma. We can't just keep quiet. We have lost Sergeant Kane in his office. We can't keep quiet. We have lost so many people. We carry. We don't we can't keep quiet. We have lost Yashaki Mebei. Yebei. We can't keep quiet. So if you keep quiet, who is going to speak for these people? Uh -huh. Ruto says he look, investigate. I hope if he takes power, he should investigate himself. The best way Ruto can bring this country to normality is for him to go to prison in committee and pick the keys, throw them in Earth River or Tana River. The keys go to Indian Ocean. Then the country can be peaceful. But this country, we are going back to more days. If Ruto takes power in this country, we shall go back to more days. You will see. Mo Muhammad can tell you, he was here. And don't pretend that you are in, you are now seated in London and you are sending messages. You think I don't know. You are here. You know how we suffered under more days. We shall go back to more days. All these guys will come to this town. We shall go back there. I was here, I saw. You cannot have presidents coming to one place. Moi ruled for 24 years. The Kikuyus have ruled for more than those years. Give the presidency to Raira Amoro Dinga, another tribe. Hala? Kenyans, let's now start talking this seriously. That's why Uhuru Mingai Kenyatta is saying, I don't want this presidency to stick in two places all the time. Give other tribes. And I wish these tribes should unite for Raira Amaro Dinga to vote 
out this man, Ruto, who is going to make us look like a god to mow his days. This is a Moi YK2 youth winger. Hala, Muna Musema Mutu Muzuri, that he is talking English. English, then you laugh. This is a very dangerous guy. Why is Jirongo not with him? Medium, why is Jirongo? Why did Jirongo who gave him the first job running away from him? Have you seen how they write their, their things on social media on me? Have you seen? They say, oh, we shall deport you home. They are used to uprooting people. Their role is to uproot people. You tell me how many Kikuyus are in Miriam. How many Kikuyus have houses in the Rift Valley and they are sleeping in the boys' quarters in London, uh, in, in Nairobi? They can't, they see the smoke in their houses. He want to threaten people. No. The president said this time should go to another tribe in Kenya. They stabilize this country. Kenya is all for us all. When Kenya is happy, uh -huh. why Why do you find Bazungu in London saying, Hello, Wakibat, I have been to Africa. Then you ask him, I went to Nairobi, this is the real Africa. You find a Muzungu in the streets of London and say, Mombasa, oh, I am saving my money to go to Mombasa. The Muzungu doesn't say I'm saving money to go to Japan or Port Elizabeth. Because in, the, in the Durban, you can't even eat your food and finish. Somebody comes if the restaurant is on the terrace. Someone will come. Do you know what, Miriam? Will come and grab the food and walk. I'm telling you in the name of God. I've seen that in South Africa. It happens. And when you follow him, even the people of the hotel will tell you, no, 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 don't, don't shout, please. You can't eat food in South Africa with your wallet and your phone kept on in the terrace that you are relaxing in a restaurant. There is a restaurant in South Africa where they have written, keep your phones in your bags. Is that a country where you want to go? Uhuru Kenyatta has made this country very good. Very good. If you come to Nairobi, people like Mo Mohammed who miss Nairobi, Nairobi is now going to be like a Stockholm with up Deca Street, six lane. Uhuru Kenyatta has built as a road that from the airport now you just go to Naivasha and enjoy the animals there and have you, your cargo, you go to Uganda. Let's get a Jaro, a Kamba, to be leaders or to Kana. Muna, muna, this that you are giving this man here leadership again. Akuna, Nyenye, you voters outside there who listen to me. When I used to tell you about ICC, was I wrong? I defeated Besuda, I defeated Ocampo. I am an example of yours. Follow me, don't follow Ruto. I don't have a vote. But follow me, follow my words, yeah. That a handshake pattern. The man has become a security risk for the president. This guy can kill the president. Yeah. And he should not be allowed to go near the president again. Never. He could, he has Russian mercenaries, my Russian, Russian mercenaries around his office. He knows where arms are bought. Can I tell you another thing that shocked you? Sudan, South Sudan is in chaos because of Ruto. With a general in, in central equatorial. Yeah, hey, Ruto took the general's money. He has banked it, built a building they have opened. It is there. Upper hill. In Akuja, Cuba. Where well, you are destabilizing East Africa. Museven, you people watch out this. This 
is not a man you should give your vote. Anafanya na kazi na brother of Sad Bashir. He flies there. He has money everywhere. You know why they were they were happy on, 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 on Tuesday. Money came on, Friday, on Saturday. Where is the NGO money in this country? I've already passed information about this NGO man. Does he really watch? They brought money. You see, when you see Sudi, a man who doesn't know how to feel a form of immigration is in Dubai. He has gone to... I don't know why. If I was an immigration officer, some... Uh, uh, eh? Ruto could be dealing with Al-Shabaab. Yes. And there is another another Lumpen called uh, who was whom I was teaching politics called Adani Dwari. Usually stupid. Uyo Adani Dwari akuna kitu uyo. Muna, muna, that if you have talked a secret with the president, do you come and tell the public? Then you call with your, with your stomach walking like it is useless. Adam Dwale, I taught you politics in Intercontinental. You didn't even know how to write your papers. You, you are going to insult Uru and you go. Maybe Uru can keep quiet in the state house. Lakin this is Rafiki ya Uru apana tawe. Tawe! Tawe! Akuna! Akuna! Oscar is missing the exams even. He should be doing exams. He's busy in Dubai. You saw him in, in Dubai with another guy. I don't know how some women love such people. It's money. Thank you very much. Tawe, it, it is too much for <laughs> that Adam Dali is a son of a general. Son of a, a thief. Uh, Adam, Adam Dwale is one of the most corrupt of documents. And are you, Mo Mohammed, you remember the, pa the passport we filled for him? Can we release it? Where? Where you are saying you are a Kenyan, Kenyan? Have you seen Matanga buying an identity card? Where, Mr. Adam Dwale, when they are speaking, shut up! You remember Stratum? You remember Stratum, Adam Dwale? Wewe? We. Nyenye, wache campaign yanze na this to tapatia Raida Inc. When he goes to Gariza, anawagonga. Muna mugonga, anawagonga. Because these people are doing all these things in a terrible mess. They are putting the country at risk. The president is at risk. Me, I'm more worried. In fact, when I see Uru talking is when I, I, I sleep in my house. Then brief and say, <laughs> so he's alive. Because Ruto can bring polonium 210. You know, the way Ruto is speaking, if he found the way to become a president before elections, he could do it. So thank you very much. For me, that is my stand. If people think I'm wrong, at my age, I've never lied to anybody. I tell the truth. Medium. We, I went somewhere with somebody. In fact, I went somewhere with Mo Mohammed, this guy here. We went somewhere in the morning. Mo Mohammed wanted me to go no, I, I'm not relaxing. I'm telling the true story. You wanted me to go and borrow money to do business. Sikia, tunafika uko, when you were seated in this man's house, and the mom Muhammad is a witness, and I want you to listen because you are watching. Tell these people right exactly whether I'm telling wrong. You know what he did? A dog. A dog came and took my shoelace. Mom Muhammad, you remember? It took my shoelace from the warning me. 
This man's dog came and picked my shoelaces. Ili toa shoelaces kwa biato yangu. This sh open shoes zile tunavaa tuko London. We were going I am not exposing you. I'm leaving you to your exposure. Tulikana ye. Kwa tunajungumiza na mna hitu nakunya chai. The dog comes and takes my shoe. Was it? Yes, the shoe and the, and the shoelace. It ran with it. So when, when we finally, the owner caught the dog and I brought the shoelace, I turned on Muhammad and I said, let's go. Muhammad said, why are you going? Let's go. I told Muhammad, this place is very dangerous. Either we are the people going to be killed now, or something is going. Didn't I tell you that morning? It didn't take one month. The money we went to look for the money was, I, 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 I come the house where we had gone for money. It was under police surveillance. So the police immediately came for me. Uh, as soon as we reached home, <laughs> the police came for Muhammad and myself. He said, why do you go to that place? Say, how did you know? He said, no, we are just checking. You are very good people. We have already checked your background. I'm telling you. But I told Muhammad, let's leave. So I'm now telling Kenyans, Ruto is not going to create a good condition for this country. If you vote him as a president, we are finished. Try. Try. We shall be gone. Mutaniambia, meet up here. On my way from Zimbabwe. My Zimbabwe is growing. Nyenye muoni yo. Handshake is coming in Zimbabwe. Sababu hapa, kama muna vote huyu mutu. Kwanza medium you won't get a job anywhere. You know why? They will all be in town here. Everybody will be a special branch. Na pistol, na... Why not? Nyanya, you younger people who have not seen these guys, you, you voted them. I told you of a story. He's still, that man is still in town. He arrested us. When I came back in 2004, I found him without shoes, walking. He said, forgive me. This is what he said, forgive me. He's here. I, I, I cannot mention his name, but one day I will bring him to this program. I helped him to re recover. And he recovered. He, he said, please, thank you very much. You are forgetful. Uh, you are forgive, forgive, uh, what? You, for, you are forgiven me. I said, I've forgiven you. In those days, medium, you could be drinking tea at a wimpe. And you are just picked every Friday. As a Ugandan, you are picked. You are just picked. And uh, while you are in the truck, in the police truck, they ask you, Sasa, unataka kulala uko chini, nyayo, house, apana, unataka kulala wapi? So, tayarisha. So, what we used to do to drink tea properly at, in, at Wimpe, you come with 100 shillings. And 100 shillings of 1985, Jesus Christ, to have 100 shillings in the pocket, it, it gives you very good meat, chapati na mulima, mulima na chapati. Unaona yo? So thank you very much, medium. That is the man you want to elect. And that is the person I've told you. I have instincts that we might go back to where we were. If you are not careful, the money is everything. You go to business, he's there. You go to hotel, he's there. You go to animals, you do. You go to a man, Mr. William Kemboy, coming with money from Burundi. He says it was for beef. When they, they check which beef had been exported, 
That's it. That's the guy you want. But me, I'm more worried about Uhuru. Because the relationship, Kenyans should do something. Media maybe tomorrow bring the topic of constitutionalism. What are you going to do? The whole of Kenya has become rogue. Administration. The Speaker of National Assembly is a candidate of a political party, DP. 146 MPs are strangers in the House. They have now a party which was not the one that elected them. Unaona yo? Mm-hmm. The deputy president is ruling, is in the house, is staying in the house, eating free food the government is paying because of the constitution. He has bodyguards. If Uru was bad, by the time he left Kasarani, he would find no policeman at his gate. No, no. Seven at times, <coughs> I can't tell you much. You know, I leave Uganda things for you at times, but you have seen the way Museven treats his opponents. If he loves you like the way, the way he, he, he if, if, look, Miriam, like the way he thinks Matanga is the productive. He comes around and tells you, don't, please don't try to come here. Yeah, you go. And he tells you, don't come. We don't want you to come. Because my coming here, we, we might be forced to do something. And if someone has told you like that, you come there. But in a, a nutshell, the speech of his Excellency, the, the Deputy President of Republic of Uganda, uh, of Kenya, sorry, has a voodoo politics and a voodoo economics. I submit. Let's bring in uh, Kiruga for your final statements. Thank you, Dr. Charlie. Uh, totally agree with what you've said. Uh, my point in short to the Deputy President, can he, can he stop bringing an economic policy perceived by being unrealistic and ill-advised? Go ahead. That is what he's doing. Go ahead. What he's doing. And um, a question that is asked by many, he said that he's going to create jobs by changing the economic models and investing in the agriculture for the young generation and the young people. But my question is, where will he get the funds from? Uh, comparing him with His Excellency, the, the, His Excellency Raila Omodo Odinga, Raila said that he has a vision to make Kenya the African continent head of global business, something he's capable of doing because he has got a vision of microeconomic. While the Deputy President approached his focus on the microeconomic aspects, I submit. Thank you very much. Uh, glad you are, uh, uh, for that summary, I think the question she has raised is that the deputy president should stop bringing class struggle. Yeah. It, is, it yeah. is going to divide this country. Because even the statements he made on uh, the border border, that yes, is, it's that a class talk. Clearly, an incitement of one class. Yeah. Actually, the border border industry against the government. Mm. That, that's what uh, he seemed to have been doing. But wh why are people fearing to take? Uh, why why uh, Matiang? Why don't you take a few? This man has hustlers to guard him. Can hustlers also be eating in the compound every day? Nobody will harm him since he has hustlers. Or oh, because he has too many f enemies. You never know. Ruto, I, I, I believe Ruto has enemies across the world. Because there are so many people, Amechanga, Pesa, Uko, Itaki, Wapi. By the way, Harun Ayadin, a master terrorist from Turkey, who was training the boy who was arrested in the Congo. 
you know there's a an institute in the Turkey that trains all the the terrorists apparently I found this out when they arrested that boy so this is a man who deals with terrorists tomorrow it is with hustlers I in, in London he didn't talk about the hustlers in the official capacity he talked about the common man common man on BBC talking about that what can we have a clip of Raira Odinga before we bring in anybody who wants to speak now the clip of Raira Amor Odinga in BBC if you have it yes do you have any BBC clip focus on Africa try to get it if it is not there we shall we shall arrange it for you Odinga answered very well Odinga made presentation at the BBC focus on Africa very well done he did a very good job yesterday thank you very much your excellency the honorable right honorable prime minister and you, you have done very well so far we shall bring live his speech from Chatham House tomorrow and those who are in Chatham House around London good luck in Chatham House you will be welcome people will be waiting for for you and the people have been looking for a change of leadership in Kenya to change to another tribe let's test we Uganda in Uganda we have tested hey we have tested Baganda we tested Luo we tested Nilotics uh, Lugubar you see Lugubar the only place that has not tested the leadership is Matsanga's area. So, uh, Miriam, what do you think? It should be my turn. They, I'm just saying because Museven doesn't want to hear those statements. Thank you. It is, shouldn't be. No, 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 no. Please, for me now, I leave my younger children maybe to contest. There are so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> not me but it is only eastern province that has not is the temporary you got the bbc let's listen to his excellency before we bring in mr daniel daniel ulizwa yani watu wa Kenya wote wanataka mimi niendelee uh, kwa sababu ya ili imani wako naye na mimi ndio sababu mimi nimeamua yani taendelea uchaguzi uliopita ulisema ndio mara yako ya mwisho lakini tena umerudi tena uh, uliita last bullet kwani watu wanauliza uko na bullet ngapi hii ni risasi ya mwisho katika bunduki hii. Lakini hii haimaanishi kwamba hiyo bunduki akiwe hapana yuko na mashete. Iko ndani yake. Sasa ile wanajeshi wa bunduki kifisha kutumia ile kisu ambayo inaitwa mashete. Na sengine vile vile inaweza kuwa hiyo imepisha na huko na shale na 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 uta. Mm. Uti tuzungumza mambo ya kura eh, na kupiga kura. Una imani na tume ya uchaguzi? Utajua kama chu, uh, mchuzi chumbi imekolea kwa mchuzi wa kuonja. Kwa hivyo sisi tunasema tunataka tume ya uchaguzi iwe wastani, ifanye kazi yake bila suruti yote kutoka kupande lolote. Uhakikisha kwamba uchaguzi nakuja inafanyika kwa njia ya haki na ukweli. Mpinzani wako lakini uh, William Ruto amedai kuwa huenda mkaingililia uchaguzi. Waswahili wasema ati mkuki kwa nguruwe kwa binadamu ni chungu. Yaani yeye mwenyewe ndiye alikuwa amesema mara nyingine ati uchaguzi ni haki na ukweli. Sisi tunapiga kelele manake hatutaki atukubali kama tumeshindwa sio nini na kadhalika. Mara hili tuliposema tunatafanya ile 
yani tuta hesabu kura uh, tofauti na ile ya tume ya uchaguzi akasema hiyo ni kinyume ya katiba ati katiba hiyo ruhusu mtu yote ijapokuwa tume ya uchaguzi ku hesabu na kutangaza sasa yeye anasema ati atafanya yake swali ni kwamba je katiba ilibadilishwa siku gani o, umekuwa kwa serikali na pia kwa upinzani ni kipi kipi ya unacholeta mezani bila vijua katika serikali wa Kenya wanajua yale tunaweza kufanya na sasa vile vile uh, tuko na sera mpya ambayo tunaleta ambayo inaweza kuharakisha maendeleo katika taifa letu kwa fani tofauti tofauti ni sera zipi ambazo utaendeleza uh, uh, ukiwa rais that is Um, ambazo uhuru Kenyatta uh, ameanzisha. Uhuru Kenyatta anafanya mingi sana kwa upande wa mambo msingi. Lakini yote yale yote bado ni kama tone ya maji kwa bahari. Tutazidi kupanua barabara katika taifa letu ili tufungue uchumi. Ndio vile mambo ya stima tutapanua. Na tutapunguza uh, bei ya stima ili uh, viwanda viweze kupanuka zaidi na kwa upande wa maji vile vile tumesema maji ni uhai tujilipo kuona kama wakenya wote pale wako watapata uh, maji kuna watu wanasema kwamba wewe ni kibaraka wa rais uh, Kenyatta yani puppet of the outgoing president unalipa una, unalipi la kusema kuhusu hayo kwa hilo dinga hawezi kuwa kibaraka ya mtu yote kwanza rais Kenyatta tumefanya na kazi ikiwa waziri mkuu yeye alikuwa naibu wangu tulifanya kazi nzuri zaidi baadaye wakati tulikuwa na utata baada ya uchaguzi uliopita nchi ilikuwa karibu inaungua wakati mimi nilichukua kiapo na yeye akachukua kiapo tukaanza thank you very much That is the speech of his excellency the right honorable prime minister an interview an interview <laughs> with BBC that took place yesterday and it is going to be replayed at length contrary if you look at these two speeches you can see the person who has a vision for Kenya a person who wants Kenya to go forward a person who is interested to make a united Kenya not a person who is interested for power to take power at will viewers we have put up several reasons we have dissected the speech of his excellency deputy president samoy ruto we have brought out issues it is up to you kenyans but kenyans are warned that leadership must rotate for a country to be stable what has made most countries in africa to have those problems is leadership to stick in one place uganda has had leadership spread all over every part of, every part of our country has got a scar right from the colonial days up to today but there are certain areas here that have whose scars have not even healed because every every time they come to open up the scars why don't you spread the leadership that other people also can handle that is the way people should think not the way ruto is thinking daniel wesonga if you are on can you give us your parting shot gladwell kiruga has given a parting shot so yes go ahead thank you yes sir uh, thank you so much uh, dr masanga david and of course uh, in kenya we are dealing with a much bigger problem perhaps than uh, we had anticipated uh, because it, You see the deputy president who is a public servant 
number two in the command, has taken the reins of the opposition and is actually talking as if he's the opposition leader of the day. If you are to come in, uh, into this country, maybe let's say from Mars or maybe uh, overseas, you will think that uh, in um, in August of uh, 2017 or in October uh, 2017, in the repeat polls, we elected Raila Odinga as the deputy president to uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto actually went away to the trenches of the opposition. And uh, the narrative that he has been driving since inception of his campaign, from uh, the hustlers versus the dynasties uh, to all the way to the bottom up, all are shallow Dr. Masanga, and is nothing uh, but an incitement narrative. And therefore, when I see him actually talking, uh, so taking some issues about uh, the border border industry lately, I believe that uh, these are politicians who believes in populism and he has no regard uh, for having structures which will ensure that that border, border sector is well structured and uh, well regulated. We understand that uh, the sector is actually uh, a sector which has gone wrong over time without so much regulation and so much oversight. Uh, we've been having these guys acting uh, as a criminal entity. Today I'll tell you that when you drive, across the city and uh, maybe you happen to hit one of the border borders, then you, you have to run very fast and report to the nearest police station or else they'll actually be able to lynch you, maybe in worst case scenario, even ban your car. Today, uh, when you're walking in the streets of, the, of, of Nairobi at night and you see a border border maybe approaching and carrying two passengers on board, you have to be very careful if you're carrying your gadget or maybe your laptop. You know, because you never know who are those on the border border, you know, who are coming. Today, anything that happens, you know, even uh, in, the, in the slum areas, the border border have, people have always been negated. So this is uh, a gang which has, over time, deteriorated and become, uh, and, and became uh, maybe to a status uh, maybe which can only be comparable to the defunct Mungiki sect. So it was, um, it, 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 it was a very, very good time for the border border uh, operators to be regulated. It is, this is a timely uh, decision from the Ministry of Interior. So I see no maybe uh, uh, ill intention in doing whatever the president by ordering a crackdown on the border border operators. It is for our own safety. It is for the good of the industry. Uh, it is for the good of the people of the Republic of Kenya. One thing that is barely unmentioned is that, uh, you know, when you go to any level three or level four, or level five hospital here in Kenya, you will find a separate wing, a separate ward for border border accident casualties. And that wing is always very full, Dr. Masanga. I have so many uh, friends who are doctors, and they will tell you of grisly stories of border border operators who are always uh, bedridden to the hospitals from the accidents and all that uh, massive confusion. So this is an industry which needs to be sorted out, and therefore I support the president in it, and anyone who is against the border border operators. Uh, the, 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 the purge on the border border operators, the rock border border operators, let me put it so, is an enemy of the people of Kenya. Because this outcry did not come from State House. This outcry came from the people of the Republic of Kenya. People like Gladwell, people like Engineer Tieno, people like myself, people like Miriam, who saw that this was a problem which, if not mitigated, will actually spill into a disaster. And owing to the fact that we are going into the election, you realize that even in the villages, when chaos starts, they start with the border border people. We've seen so many of them die uh, trying to uh, to do some theatrics with their, bikes, uh, with their bikes when they are even taking bodies to, for burial in the villages and all that. We've seen so many being hit by vehicles, even on the highways, you know. Start counting the casualties from uh, uh, from here in Limuru all the way to Nakuru. You will be shocked at how many lives have been lost through this industry. And this is because we don't have regulation. A young man just clears from four or class eight, buys a new motorbike from a piece of land he has been given by the parent, and before you know it, they are on the road without a license, without any skills on road safety, without any kind of regulation. And that is what William Ruto wants to be, you know. That is the status quo that he wants us to keep. I don't think, Dr. Masanga, uh, that is the way to go for a leader. We need regulation. Rwanda has done it. Tanzania has done it. Uganda has done it. We need to do that here in Kenya so that we bring order in our border border and transport sector. Maybe just to mention, Dr. Masanga, uh, in regards to the political scape uh, that uh, we are witnessing at the moment, I managed to go through the four counties of Western Kenya uh, over the weekend, uh, checking the legacy of the president. 
And uh, there's a lot that uh, the president has done, including roads. I was in uh, Wasungishu County, where the bypass in Eldoret is actually in its completion stages. I was in Bihiga County, where the road uh, leading, uh, coming from Majengo all the way to Luanda, the president, and many, many more projects that are being done even in the county of Kisumu, which are on the final stages, the markets and all that, which are on the final stages of completion by the legacy of the president. On the political opinion of the people, I believe this is a race decided, Dr. Masanga already decided, and it doesn't matter what William Ruto will do or what he'll say. Kenyans are already decided, and uh, if any uh, anything is to go by, uh, maybe to uh, just attribute to the opinion poll that was recently uh, released, we have a big number of Kenyan people who believe that Raila Odinga is going to win, regardless of who they are going to vote in the August polls. So this is a game which has already been closed, and we know where the leadership of this country is headed to. And therefore, there is no need of him insulting the president. There is no need of inciting the people against the government of Kenya, Dr. Matsanga. I submit. Thank you very much, Miriam. <laughs> Over to you. Can I say my parting shot as well? Yes. Yeah, thank you very much, my very kind and good uh, panelists. It is my first time to be with you. As I mentioned, I didn't want to talk. I wanted to listen. I wanted to construct. I wanted to build. And I've built a very, very big team with a very, very big vision. I've listened very clearly to Miriam. I will not be very, very much on it. Miriam, you said and you mentioned a statement by William Ruto yesterday, which he made as a leader, a second in command in this country. He made a statement in our own forum. That is one very key thing. When we are VIPs, we have to be carried with wisdom by what state of uh, position of, the, of our office we hold. William Ruto is a second in charge. He's a president. If Uhuru Kenyatta dies today, William Ruto will take the Bible immediately. His words, his statements are presidential, but for this forum, he was not. I've heard Dr. Masanga, you mentioned about the danger. This particular human being in our current state of, 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 of the nation today is in itself danger. A very good example of error. William Ruto is a mistake. I've listened to Daniel. Daniel, you are very, very much strong. You can become a leader. And I'm looking up to you. One day we'll have tea. You are a very vibrant and informative brain. You've talked about the border border. I picked from the onset when you said William Ruto started campaigning early. A deputy president starting campaigning early first year on the second term. You must lose wind. You cannot be so special or so scientific that you campaign today and tomorrow you are talking about work. William Ruto ran away, away from office. He went back to the field to go dine and, 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 and have fun with the dogs. He's with the cleaners now. He cannot be administrative anymore. He's honorable no more. He's not a leader. He's not a VP. He's a politician, but he's still holding office. That is very key to pick. I've listened to uh, our good lady, the journalist from Gidurai. I have a property next to where you live. We will meet one day. Uh, Gladwell. Gladwell, you mentioned about the two economic models. Whenever you talk about economic model today, you have to be informative. You have to get your indexes right. You have to get to know the state of the nation, the state of the economy today, and what the country is looking at tomorrow. And then you do the comparisons. Then you come to the people with a model. What we have that you are seeing on the side of William Ruto, I'm extraying and looking between Ruto and Raila, who has a model, for me, I'm not looking at who must be my president. I want to see who is going to be a model that I want for myself and my family. William Ruto has a copy-paste, a model that has been tried in African, nowhere in African, but in Asian countries that have failed. It has been tried in India. It failed. So how it's going to be brought down to us, to be understood by us, and to be affected is a mirage, as he says, mirage. Uh, who is Daniel? I've talked about Daniel, Dr. Masanga, yes. Now, I want to describe Ruto in a nutshell, and I'm not uh, really against William, but I'm against William and his ideology. I'm so much worried about the anger that a second in command is carrying each and every day with him. 
Ruto is very bitter. So we want to learn and start looking at reasons why it's bitter from today until the August 9th, the day of the election. The bitterness of a second in command today is very dangerous to this country. And Ruto is weeping emotions that is pitting the poor against the rich and the semi-rich. Today in Kenya, we don't know who is rich, we don't know who is capable, and we don't know who is semi-rich. Because we have hustlers, we have uh, the wash wash community, the people are carrying money in briefcases, and we have imitators who are running with big cars in big cars in, this, in the city streets, and you cannot place them where they work and what they do in the project they've completed. As an engineer, I can be proud enough to mention one or two projects which I've completed the value of the product, project and the completed period of the project. So you can project what I do and what it will be tomorrow in the economy. But now you are pitting the poor against the rich. Very dangerous. Unemployment in Africa today is something that you don't want to play about with. We are recovering from pandemic. Most of the African countries are struggling to compete amongst each other. We remember when African leaders went to China to meet the leader of China, Museveni, Uhuru Kenyatta, and even South African President Ramaphosa. They were queuing like schoolboys waiting for, for a packet of milk. That is what Africa is looking at the Europe and Western countries. We are struggling to recover from the pandemic. We don't want a president. We want a leader who will jump and cross the river with us from the pandemic into post-pandemic economic recovery. I don't see that one, that one in William Ruto. Probably I can see that one on the side of Raila Amolo Dinga, but we have also to work him hard, and he must also package himself very well, because we are living in a youthful uh, time where technology is also catching up with us, yes. and our recovery is be based on technology. So Raila, his age is advanced. He has to have a team, young people, very vibrant people like Dr. Masanga, who can actually go into the internet, come out with information, spread it out very quickly, and gather a team of very uh, wealthy brains like me and like Miriam. And I can see she's very strong. Mm -hmm. She analyzes the newspapers very quickly, comes back with it, and she coordinates the, 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 the panel well. So we really pray that we get a leader in the next election that is there for the country, not a leader who is, who is trying to pocket and grab as much. No one will talk about corruption today without mentioning William Ruto. No one will talk about stolen wealth without mentioning William Ruto. No one will talk about murder, assassination, maiming, blackmailing. And again, the last, as I, as I conclude, when you're a leader trying to become a leader of this nation called Kenya today, as a president of the Republic of Kenya, why buy our votes? Why buy our leaders? Why pay political parties to clown and to give you an image? We don't want an image. We want a solution. We want a country. We don't want a leader. We want a president who is going to be a servant to travel with us into the future as a country competing with other countries in the region, in Africa and in the continent. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Otieno, clearly you're very keen and you even took notes. Thank you so much. And we, appreci we really do appreciate your contribution today. Thank you, Gladwell Kiruga, and of course, Daniel Wesunga. My name is Miriam Gupta. And I'll sign now because we have to leave a chance now for Dr. Matanga to make his uh, uh, last uh, submission and also to give a takeaway. I'll see you later, perhaps with more news from across the continent. Bye bye for now. Thank you very much, Miriam. Thank you very much, Engineer, for the summary that you have given us this morning. And thank you very much. We hope you will be joining us all the time to, so that we mobilize the platform where we can fill gaps for His Excellency, the Right Honorable Prime Minister. Engineer is my friend for a long time. We have been together. We have done quite a lot of things together. We continue to do things together. We do analysis. Engineer brings in material that is really serious. And uh, I want to thank you that you continue to pump that material. I will not let you down. Thank you very much, uh, Gladwell. And here is our take. Take away. Viewers across the continent of Africa and in Kenya. President Uhuru Mwingai Kenyatta, together with Prime Minister Raila Amolo Dinga, took a handshake 
which brought about tranquility, peace, freedom of movement in all parts of Kenya without any discrimination. Today, Kenya is peaceful because the two stood together and they gave it a chance under a united umbrella. Today, Kenya sounds infrastructure, the economy, things are coming up because they are united. Azimio la umoja is unity. It's like Chama, Chama Pinduzi in Tanzania, when it says Ujama, Ujama villages in Tanzania brought about unity of purpose. The unity that brought Tanzanians to understand that they are not tribes. That is the Kenya we want. Our worried today, the speech that was made by His Excellency, the Deputy President, has threatened the security of the President of the Republic of Kenya. Time has come to separate the two and to be honest, candid, tell the world and the Kenyans that the time has come for one of them, not one of them, but the Deputy President to leave government and concentrate on his party and allow President Uhuru Mwingai Kenyatta to have his five months and to prepare for a, a smooth transition to the new leadership, whoever will come after elections. The type of disruption that we have seen, the type of belittling, the, ty the type of mismatching the name of the president, the type of targeting has become an insecurity itself. Insecurity could not, is not a mere picking a gun or picking a panga or a stick to beat. Insecurity comes through words, words of hatred towards the president and the head of state. Are Kenyans seeing this? We talk about corruption. President Uru Kenyatta has tried his level best. But the biggest man who wants to become a victim is Ruto, who has been associated. If you Google Ruto, you will see the name comes out, corruption, corruption, corruption. Is this the man that people want to leave this country? I am not a voter in this country, but I have followers across this country, millions that hear my voice from for the last 11 years. Can you make a choice on that day? A choice, and that choice is the people, a person who will serve this country, a united country, give Kenya a united image so as to integrate with East Africa and make a better Africa. That is the Kenya, and that is Azimio La Umoja of Raira Amolo Dinga, who can unite this country, leave this country as Kenya, not a country dismembered by Ruto's policies. I submit.